In this video, I'm doing some sketching to figure out if my designs, which were so static in the silhouette stage, will actually work once the character starts moving and starts doing things. So I started with Clarice, my elemental mage magic person. And I started with her because she is the most challenging for just the amount of cloth that she has. Um, she has, you know, really baggy pants, and she has this huge, like, cloak, jacket, cape thing, and she's just pretty much covered from head to toe in really voluminous amounts of fabric that was supposed to give her the luxury feel that she has, you know, the um, financial capability to just cover herself in all kinds of fine fabrics. But it becomes quite a challenge when those fabrics just make her silhouette uh, pretty much a blob all the time, and it doesn't really help that her hair also <laughs> hangs down like that. So it's a little bit of a challenge to, um, you know, express what she's doing without compromising her outfit or compromising, like, the silhouette and her pose. Uh, but... Then again, I was thinking, well, she's also supposed to be this very lazy character, and I'm hoping she'll be the only character that does have this consistently kind of blobby silhouette. And in that case, I don't think I'll mind it so much if um, her silhouettes are, are really um, lacking in, in detail, because then you'll know automatically that, oh, that must be Clarice, because um, she's the only one that has so much fabric that you can't really tell what she's doing. So I started off with that sitting pose above and then kind of uh, leaning against a wall or something, standing pose, and then I'm just like, let's go for about as dramatic as Clarice probably gets with her motions, which is when she's casting magic, and I have no idea what it's going to be like when she casts magic, but I just wanted to do something that um, would, you know, uh, kind of show her being less lazy and more active. And again, I tried that with... Uh, some kind of exaggerated kind of leaping running pose and wanted to figure out, like, how does this big jacket thing work? And, you know, along with her poofy pants and tunic and everything else. And um, it, it kind of came out a little comical, and I think, you know, that's fine because I can't take myself very seriously most of the time. But it was around here that I kind of discovered that it would might well it might be easier if her jacket instead of having actual sleeves was just a cape and just went over um, her shoulders and then I went back to these poses and tried to see well how much more of her body could you see then if it was a cape and not um, a jacket or a I don't even know what to call it it's like uh, big poncho with bell sleeves like I don't even know so um got rid of the sleeves basically I wanted to see what would happen if I got rid of the sleeves and it did help in some of the poses and in the standing one it didn't really make a difference uh, so I just went for one more face shot just because I want to have some practice at um, their faces in different angles too and just kind of see how the cape would go over her arm the one that she has raised to her lips as she's thinking about if it's worth the energy to do whatever motion she's about to do. And, um, yeah, it's, it, I think it's going to be okay. I think I can work with this um, outfit. I tried to give her a cap, but it was like, no. So then I tried to give her a different headband. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the headband yet. But um, I think turning the um, sleeved garment into a cape instead is going to be a good one. And then my academic magic character, Socorro, her, I wanted to figure out what am I going to do when she's like sitting down because she has a very long, um, again, I do not know the terms, like everything below her belt, what do you call this, like the loin flap, like I don't know, but anyway, those long pieces of fabric that extend beyond her belt, like what am I going to do with those when she's sitting down? Or, um, you know, her shoulder pads, like I'm not entirely sure 
how they will allow her range of movement. Gosh, she has a long neck in the sketch. Oh, well. Uh, so those are the things. Oh, I fixed it. Those are the things that I'm kind of testing out with these sketches is just how how are these characters going to move. And I really like her her really super fluffy ponytail, but I thought maybe it was overwhelming her face. So then I was trying to find like a good proportion in between the two. Try to give her some kind of headgear because I feel like if you're in a fantasy RPG type thing, you need some headgear. But um, it's looking very Wonder Woman, so I doubt that will stay a part of her design. Uh, early on in some of the um, silhouette sketches, I put like the cloth cover with some buttons over her boots, and they still kind of like that. It's sort of um, that British time period of like. You know what I'm talking about with with the buttons up the boots. I don't know the exact period. Okay, I just know. I just know it exists. And then I uh, wanted to do something a little more animated, forward facing. So she's just like running and going like, "Hey guys, wait for me." And proportions are all whack, but that's okay. All I want to do is figure out can these clothes move in the ways that I need them to move. Is sketching out the rough pose first and figuring out what to do with her arms and stuff. And then just going in and filling in a little bit of detail just to get um, more efficient at drawing their faces and stuff. And like there's really no shortcut to it when it comes to making your character's designs more efficient in the, the, you know, the shapes that you choose and how quickly you can draw them and replicate them. Um, basically, you can only just give yourself a time limit and sketch your characters as fast as you can and see what shapes come from that, and then that will likely be the shapes that they are recognized by. So these drawings that I w was doing here, probably five minutes each in real time, because the entire thing of doing all three characters took me about 45 minutes, and I'm doing, I think, three three to five poses each. So probably, well, let's just say, let's make math easy and say it's probably um, five minutes each. Uh, I want to do something with her shoulders raised, so I'm having her tie her hair back here. Not very well, but I just want to see how I can like hinge these shoulder pads so that they will allow her some freedom of movement. And it's unfortunate that the shoulders are one of the most complex joints in the human body. And we just love to try to put things on them, but then not hinder the mobility. It's it's a challenge, okay? It's tough. So this is the three I did for Socorro, and then my prickly pipsqueak Kess. I feel like she's more like spy, crouching, sneaking, thieving sort of movements. So I started off with just her kind of crouching up against a wall and did another little sketch of her like sitting in a tree. And another one of her is like leaping, this like action line, whoosh. And wanted to see what would happen to her clothes if I did that. And then one of her just stuffing her face because, you know, a girl's got to eat. So that was the plan. I also did a little doodle down there, but I don't think I finished it because it was boring. It's like there's nothing that I could get out of that pose, like no new information about how her cloth would move. So I'm just like, shh, not going to waste my time. So I started out with just working with her face because, again, I wanted to get more familiar with her faces and the um, shortcuts to making each character look like each character. I'm still not sure about that flippy hair on the back. I feel like it's too similar to Rukia from Bleach, and like that's all I see whenever I do that little flippy thing. Uh, so I might, yeah, just take it off. So Kes has the half cloak cape thingy. Um, that I wasn't sure what to do with, but I'm figuring it out as I do the sketches. Figured out this time to just have her hair go over her eye first so I don't draw both eyes and then, you know, erase one. That's not smart. That's not efficient. And I really like the, like, gladiator fringe and the thick fringe on her boots. So I think that gives a lot of gravity and weight to her poses, which otherwise she wouldn't really have. Um, still not quite sure about this half cloak, if it actually adds anything to her. 
aside from the asymmetricality, which makes her a little more edgy looking and a little more unpredictable looking. The one sitting in the tree, again, trying to go for those um, identifiable shapes first, like the hair and the dark circles under her eyes and stuff like that. I really love that fringe, though. It's really doing awesome things. I may add fringe to like every character design from here on out. It's great. I love it. And her other arm. Just doodling. Again, each of these are super quick. Just like five minutes. This one, I think I went a little too crazy with the hair. She's going like Super Saiyan or something. Uh, when it was supposed to be just, you know, the natural lift of hair flying around when you're in motion. Again, checking out if her arms can go over her head. She has no problem because she has no shoulder armor or anything, so there really wasn't anything to figure out there. Wasn't loving what the gladiator skirt was doing there. So I thought, you know what, let's do the boot fringe first. Boot fringe first. Super loose, super gestural. Really not getting into any any you know nitty bitty details right now. I just want to see how the big shapes work. Have her cloak flying around. Decided to give her some biker shorts type stuff so that I don't have to worry about any you know, underwear shots and can freely move her around. So that's about it. Hope you found some of this helpful for developing your own character's clothing and figuring out if they can actually move in the ways that they need to move for your own webcomic.